that's Patia across the bay in the distance, and we're going to have a chat about can you afford to live here? Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Now, the title of this video is Can You Afford to Live in Thailand? Now, while we're having a chat about this, uh, this question, well, I was actually going south on Sukhumvit Road. You saw me do a U-turn, I'm now going north on Sukhumvit Road because I want to go left uh, to Bang Surrey. Before we start the chat, I just want to show you on a map where Bang Surrey is. Um, it's south of uh, Jom Tien, uh, but you need to use the Sukhumvit Road to get there. You can't go down Beach Road, it doesn't exist. Um, it's about 20 minutes or so, 25 minutes at the moment where we are. So we've got another 5-10 minutes to go. So it's about a 30 minute drive south of Patia to get there. Um, it, we've just passed the floating market a while back so we're going down the little uh, country road which leads down to the beach and then we go left and we go all the way down there um, the reason why I'm showing you this really is because it, it, it's it's something I've never shown you before and it's um, a traditional Thai fishing village and it's almost exactly what Pache used to be about 40 years ago it's a fishing village, the place is full of seafood restaurants. It specializes in, in seafood, all different types of seafood. Um, but you'll have a look, I'll, we'll have a look, and I'll just show you some menus as well while we're having a look. Uh, but the main subject of the video is, can you afford to live here? So, there's the beach. Now there's a restaurant coming up on the left side, which looked really quite appealing, I thought. Um, here this one with the uh, with the thatched roof so I'm just going to take you inside and show you um, the prices uh, and what there is available and what have you when I just uh, get past this soy dog those. <coughs> anyway, let's have a look at the at the menu shall we and then we'll, we'll continue with the, with the chat so there's the, there's the menu not expensive just normal prices but the seafood is absolutely fresh as fresh as fresh as it can be you know it's just from the boat which is I'll, I'll show you the the, the uh, moorings and the boats and everything further down but we'll just uh, have a quick look at the prices first uh, it just really appealed to me there that that um, restaurant I don't know why it just looked nice anyway uh, let's move on shall we right thank you there we go now let me just show you the the view across the bay and you'll see where uh, you can actually make out more so with a normal eyesight than with the GoPro to be honest but you can you can just about make it out let me show you uh, where, where the main the highest building in in uh, Pache is. I'll just show you right now. You ready? That is Pache Park Tower. You can see it better in, with normal eyesight. Anyway, let's move down uh, down the beach road and, and and show you the place, and we'll start the chat. So. Can you afford to live here? Or what's the cost of living here? I mean, the whole ball game is changed when you come to live here. It's not the same as when you came on vacation by a long way. Um, when you were out partying every night and uh, spending a fortune on you know what <laughs> and raining 20 baht notes in the goggles and all that sort of thing. Um, most people can't sustain that lifestyle for more than about a month um, either the money or your body gives out whichever one it comes first you know yes remember that remember that because we're going to go and see an estate agent later and I'll show you uh, something 
Um, but what you can afford does depend on, on your lifestyle and on what you choose to do and where you choose to live. I mean, one of the first things to consider is the cost of accommodation, isn't it? Um, to a degree, that's dictated by where you want to live. Um, unfortunately, all the accommodation prices have gone up compared to the pre t pre pandemic prices. In my opinion, about 25 to 30 percent, something like that. So, a, a condo in the city centre, somewhere like Soy 15, uh, behind the avenue, which was maybe 15,000 a month, uh, tie about a month, is now around 19,000. Uh, but you don't need any transportation in the city centre, so you don't have the cost of a motorbike or a car, a rental on top of that, do you? The um, most popular area for expats, in my opinion, is Jom Tien, because you, uh, you still have the sea and a beautiful big beach, uh, which has been rebuilt and widened recently, hasn't it, you remember? Um, and it runs all the way down to Na Jom Tien now. Um, but the the prices of both hotels and condos are about 20%, so I would guess, cheaper than the city centre. I mean, obviously, there's something about the beach and the sea which attracts expats, obviously. Uh, that's why I've come down past Na Jom Tien today to show you Bang Surai village. Uh, because there's a lot of people who don't want anything to do with patchy nightlife and maybe they have a girlfriend or a wife or whatever and they want a quieter life um, where they have beautiful restaurants um, which are very very good value and fresh food and they have the beach and they have a quieter life so I just thought I'd show you anyway now there are two restaurants here near each other which uh, I've just stopped the bike and just walking through just to show you the menus on them both um, and then we'll continue with the chat but let's just have a quick look let's see what they've got to offer it all looks okay doesn't it Now, if you choose the seafood, it's going to be fresh. Let's just move along a little bit. There's another one just up here, which looked okay as well. Now, there are a few foreigners sitting around in the bars but and restaurants, but not many at all, only a few. The menus are only in Thai, as you can see. So I asked her to if she had a, a menu in English. That's quite cheap. See the salmon steak before, that's quite cheap. It's okay, I'll just look at it. And that uh, beach road is not busy at all. You, you, you can sit there and not be hassled by traffic. Right, let's uh, get back on the bike and move on. Now, if uh, price is your prime consideration, then you may want to think about living on e East Patia or the dark side, where the condos are the cheapest in Patia and the area has dozens of cheap markets and shops and bars but there's no beach and there's no sea and there's no view um, there you can still find condos for six seven eight thousand baht a month um, so that's the cheaper side so um, probably the prettiest area of of Patia to live is uh, Wangamat Beach area which is in my opinion the most picturesque beach in Patia but 
beachfront condos in places like the Palm or Zaire or Riviera are Western prices, you know, 30,000 baht up. Uh, and there are not many cheap eateries in that area. So you have to have money to live in, in Wangamat, in my opinion. Um, which b brings me to the last area to live, which is Prasimnak. Now, that happens to be my favourite, um, as it's far enough away from the centre to be quiet, but you can still get down to the action on a motorbike in 10 minutes. Car will take you a bit longer because of the traffic, probably twice as long. Uh, but Dongtown Beach is... Uh, it's almost as lovely as, as um, Wangamata Beach um, and it's not so isolated um, it sort of connects with Pratamnak Soi 5 in the north and Jomtien Beach in the south uh, and there's lots and lots of cheap eateries in Pratamnak uh, and recently some very good new bars have opened uh, now, the price of condos are between the city centre prices and the Jum TM prices. Um, so you're looking at around sort of 15,000 baht a month, that sort of price. <coughs> now, once you've chosen where you want to live, that you then need to decide um, how you're going to get around. If you're going to choose to stay in the city centre, then uh, you can use the Bart bus, the Song Tao, uh, which runs in an oval shaped route f uh, from Second Road up. Well, let me just interrupt the video for a second, uh, the chat for a second, because we've turned right now and I want to show you where all the fishing boats are. And all this is a pier, this runs right the way out to the sea. At the moment, the tide's out, as you can see. Uh, but the fishing boats are all just sitting on the holes waiting for the walk, for the tide to come back in again. And you see how many fishing boats there are. <laughs> now that they're, they're now sitting on the on the water now. It's quite a long pier this, isn't it? You can if you look at Google Maps you can actually see it very clearly. Uh, this I think this is the longest one I think. But it's all fishing, fishing, everything to do with fishing. They supply all the uh, restaurants in Satahip and uh, probably probably John Chem as well, I would think. So that's the end of the pier. See that building on the right, the high one? That's the, the Del Mar, or Del Mare, which we passed earlier which I said remember because we're going to go into a, an estate edge and have a quick look. Alright, let's move back because um, there's another couple of things I want to show you as well while we continue the chat. So I was just uh, talking about the BART bus which runs in an oval shaped route up Second Road to Dolphin Roundabout and then down Beach Road to South Patty Road and then the traffic lights with uh, Second Road uh, and it's only 10 BART. Now you, the other thing you can do is uh, in the city centre is you can download the Volt app um, on your phone as well. Um, you can get a, a car taxi for the price of, of a normal motorbike taxi, which are not safe, the motorbike taxis. Um, but you, you definitely don't need to rent or buy a car or a motorbike in the city centre. For sure you don't. Um, let me just show you this... Uh, <laughs> something unusual inside here <laughs> I remember it from last time I was here so let me just show you inside this temple
just got to take my shoes off. <laughs> really surprised when I went last time and saw this. I thought, what? <laughs> what is going on with that? Anyway, you'll see in a minute. You'll see. It's still there, I think. Is that Skeletor? <laughs> Crazy. Okay, let's uh, leave the temple behind and uh, continue with the chat. We'll just go around some of the streets and then I'll take you up the main road. So we'll just have a, have a little wander around while, while we have a chat. So we're talking about where you don't need to have your own transport. Besides, obviously there's the city centre, but besides that, there's Jom Tien. Now, um, that's on a BART bus route um, and if you stayed between sort of second road and the beach or beach road then you definitely can get away with no personal transport for, for most of Jump Tien uh, and you can get up up there over the, the hill you know so um, but if you choose to live in Wangamat or like East Patia or Pratamnak then you will want probably to rent long term or buy a car or a motorbike. Now the cost of that will be about 3,000 baht a month to rent a, a 125cc motorbike or scooter as you can also call it um, or about 15,000 baht a month for a, a small car. Um, <coughs> so if you consider your, your accommodation costs, um, it could be 3,000 baht higher um, if you're on a BART bus route because you don't need to rent a motorbike. You know, you know, obviously a car would be much more. Um, but one sobering thought about motorbikes is that the motorbike deaths here in Thailand are run running at about 15,000 deaths a year. Uh, so you need to bear that in mind if you're considering getting a motorbike. Uh, and don't even think about getting a motorbike uh, unless you're an experienced rider. Um, who's held a motorbike license in your own country for several years? Uh, for example, I have over 30 years of motorbike experience and I had to be very careful at the beginning in, in Thailand adapting to the insane no rules style of riding here. Um, you're a lot safer renting or buying a car. Not only because the car gives you more protection, but car drivers seem to be more sane than motorbike lunatics. <laughs> and they are lunatics. I mean, they go through red lights all the time. You know, the motorbikes, not so much the cars. Well, they do as well, but not quite as bad as the motorbikes. Yeah, but um, it, 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 renting a car is, is probably, if you're going to get a car, it's probably a, a, a better idea than buying one in many ways. Um, because the, the prices are, are insane, unless you buy new. If you buy new, fine, okay. But the prices of the, uh, the, the, the older cars, I mean, four or five years old, six years old cars are, of the similar sort of price you'd, you'd get for a two-year-old car in, in a Western country. For some reason, they're just, I think it's the import duties. They're just uh, crazy, the prices of the second-hand cars. You're better off be buying a new one, uh, as long as you've got the cash, obviously. So another subject is, uh, is food. Now, I can cook and I, I enjoy cooking so it's a huge advantage from the price point of view uh, if I I can go to Big C or I can go to a market um, I can buy food for 
three or four days, five days for 300 baht, really. And, and that, if I wanted to, I could just cook that stir fry it, make it for, uh, enough for two or three days, put it in the fridge, and um, <laughs> that that's enough, you know. Uh, that will do me for three or four days. It's crazy cheap. Um, obviously, I have something at maybe lunchtime, so uh, say in addition to that, you can add a maybe a hundred baht onto it. So it's really, really cheap to eat here. Uh, and unless of course you want to go out to his restaurants all the time which then it can get uh, a few hundred baht you know or more uh, every day a thousand baht you can go up to every day if you want to but I, I don't do that well, there's a happy leaf on the left fancy even even down here they're selling that <laughs> crazy um, so food uh, it's up to you it's entirely up to you you know I just I just don't spend a lot of money on food. I don't need to. Right? Um, I mean, another thing that you probably need to consider is uh, is what are you going to occupy your time with doing, and do, will that cost you money? Like, like the the fees for golf clubs and all this sort of thing, which which you do. Uh, and if you're going to go drinking in a bar, uh, you know, every day, that's going to cost you money uh, again. So. You need to regulate your lifestyle, n not like a holiday, but just don't don't go out as much. Which would you know, really, if you're really careful with your money, then obviously you want to have a steady girlfriend, uh, but not one that's going to cost you a fortune. Not a, like an eight or a nine or something. You know, you're talking about backing off that a little bit to uh, you know a five or a six, who, who's not going to cost you much. <laughs> so, uh, oh, l let me just, I just spoke to this guy here for a second. Is there an estate agent anywhere around here? Up there. Thank you. Yeah, because I wanted to go and check the price of uh, condos down here to see what they were. Because you saw the one earlier on, which was 5,500 baht. I mean, that's, it's a modern block, you know what I mean? Uh, and other ones are, th that's all the ones which are, are, t are cheap. So we'll just call into this estate agent here and have a quick chat. Just in case there's some guys who want to be, you know, a nice quiet area. Which is what this is, with a wife or a girlfriend. So that, there's the estate agent that guy was talking about. We'll go and have a chat. Uh, obviously, she's interested because she came to the door as soon as I walked to the window. She got up from her office and, and, and came came up to the door and started chatting, which was very nice. Hi. Hi. Your card. Looking. Our website about real estate market. Looking for bargain prices. Good, good price, you know, good price. <laughs> for okay. how much for rent condo? What's your b lowest price for rent condo? Lowest, huh? Six yeah. thousand, huh? Studio room. Studio six thousand. A year, no. Uh, and what about what about one bedroom? One bedroom has twelve thousand per season. Have twelve thousand. Uh, one bedroom. Yes. Yeah. About 38 square meters. Yeah. Um, that one. This one here. Yes, right. Sea view. Alright, sea view as well. In season, inside the house. And it's about 38 meters. And Del Mare, Del Mare is this much. Oh, in on the beach. If you want some more, you can come back. Yeah, yeah, will do. Thank you for your help. Thank you. Also. Thank you. you remember earlier in the video, I pointed out that tall modern block, the Del Mare, the one you just spoke about. That one, which you saw, is twenty thousand. Is a huge apartment right at the top, on the ocean, facing the ocean. Anyway. I hope you liked the video. I think it was something different. Um, please subscribe, like, share, ring the bell and comment and have a look at Patreon. 
Thank you very much for watching guys. See you on the next one.